a need to talk about Wavelink 2.0. Elgato released 10 new updates with their Wavelink software and I'm telling you, some of these features, I'm gonna walk you through all 10 of the updates that Elgato's brought to life with Wavelink 2.0, starting with number one, one-click routing. Before Wavelink 2.0, when you would set up your Wavelink software for the first time, you would have to launch the app, go into your settings, find the app in your volume mixer, and then assign it to your channel of choice. It was my least favorite part of the setup process, but now you can just click the plus icon in the channel you want to route something to, and then click the checkbox for the thing you want assigned there. So much time saved, because in just a few boops, it's done. And then you can even see the little icons of the apps you've routed there. And if you change your mind and you wanna move something from one channel to a different one, literally four clicks and it's done without having to leave the app to open a new window somewhere else. And you're not limited to the number of apps or games that can be routed to each channel. And don't worry, you don't have to reroute every app every time you launch them. Once you've routed something for the first time, it should stay that way. <sighs> Quality of life. Next up, we've got number two, Voice Focus powered by AI Acoustics, which is exactly what it sounds like. It uses artificial intelligence to give your microphone studio grade quality through steps like removing unwanted background noise and addressing reverb. It can run on nearly any system and CPU without any specific GPU requirements. Currently, Voice Focus is compatible with the Elgato Wave 1, Wave 3, and Wave Neo microphones, as well as the Elgato Wave XLR and XLR Dock for String Deck Plus. So even if you have an XLR mic that's not from Elgato, if it's connected to the Wave XLR or the XLR Dock that connects to the String Deck Plus, you can still use this feature. To turn on Voice Focus, all you have to do is click the audio effects button at the bottom of the microphone channel, and at the top of the list, you'll see a toggle button for the new feature. If you already have studio quality sound, you might not need it, but if you have a little ruckus going on in the background that you'd like to spare chat from without having to reduce your gain to a peep, this could help. Number three, sound check. Once you're in the audio effects section of the mic channel, at the bottom, you'll see a brand new record button. Now you can record a 10 second sample of your voice, play it back, and in real time, toggle your effects on and off to hear the differences. Number four, channel name syncing. When you rename a channel in Wavelink, it will also update it in Windows to reflect the new name. So if you wanna rename your voice chat channel to Yap City, which I probably will, it will now be known as Yap City in OBS and your Windows volume mixer as well. Number five, virtual output cleanup. Prior to the update, in Windows, all of your Wavelink virtual outputs appeared in this long list of sound outputs. But say you don't actually need or use all of them, you can now go into Wavelink, select the drop down for the channel you aren't using, and click Remove Input, which will then remove the channel from both Wavelink and the virtual output list on Windows. Cleaning things up a little bit. Number six, mute. So there wasn't actually a mute button for your microphone in the previous Wavelink software. You could mute the audio sending to your mixes, but you couldn't actually mute the mic itself. I learned that lesson firsthand in a lockdown protocol lobby while talking to my partner who was in the kitchen about what we wanted for dinner. Meanwhile, our friends were holding a post-match intervention to figure out why Purple was seen holding a screwdriver over Green's body when they weren't even the dissident. Who? What? Who? Oh. The point is, now there's a button to engage the hardware mute on the mic itself. Clear comms. Number seven, export profile to Stream Deck. After you spent some time getting all your Wavelink channels exactly how you want them, you can click the new Stream Deck export button at the top right, select the Stream Deck you want to export the profile to, and then the new profile will appear on your Stream Deck in the same format you've arranged in Wavelink. Same order, matching color assignments, and as many pages as you need to display each channel. The ecosystem just keeps growing. Number eight, assign routing through the Stream Deck Wavelink plugin. Within the Stream Deck Wavelink plugin, if you want to route a new input source to a specific channel, there's a new option within the input action section called add. 
Imagine it's demo week for your favorite gaming library and you've got plans to run it. Prior to the update, every time you opened a new game for the first time, you'd have to click out of the game, open your sound settings, find the game in the list, open the drop down menu, find the channel you wanted to assign it to, and then select it. It's like six steps. Now you can get ahead of it and set up input ad keys on your stream deck that are specific to the channels you update most frequently. Once that button is set, every time you open a new app for the first time that you know you want assigned to a specific channel, you can just press the button you created on your stream deck and it will automatically assign it as long as it's currently selected in the foreground. So when demo week rolls around and you're getting ready to play through a rack of demos for the first time with chat, all you have to do is press the input ad button after you open the games to quickly assign it to the right channel and avoid the occasional blaring opening screen audio. One button just knocked out what was originally a multi-step process. Number nine, assign routing through the Stream Deck Plus dials. Everything we just talked about using the Stream Deck Wavelink plugin to streamline routing assignments, Elgato even took it a step further and made it so that if you have the Stream Deck Plus, instead of needing to use several buttons designated to each audio channel you want to add inputs to, you can just use one dial with the action wheel function, add your assortment of input add sub functions, and scroll the options like a champion. Have your chosen app selected, wheel to the channel you want, button the dial, audio assigned. Wheel, button, wheel, button, wheel, button. It's beautiful. <laughs> Number 10, cleaner UI. That's all. They just tidied it up a little bit. These are the types of updates that I love. Quality of life updates, making it easier, streamlining the process, removing unnecessary steps, skip the runaround and amplify the productivity. For a lot of creators, regardless of the stage we're at in our journey, setup is the barrier. The thing that prevents people from trying something new, transitioning from something familiar, the upfront cost of the time investment. Updates like these expand the doorway for creators who just need a good reason to give something a try by making things less complicated and more of a relief. I'm excited to be an Elgato creator. Being able to share exciting insights like this with you all is something I'm really looking forward to doing a lot more of. In the comments, let me know which of these 10 updates were your favorites. For me, it's definitely one-click routing, channel name syncing, routing assignments using the Stream Deck Plus dials, and of course, the mute button. <laughs> If you have a friend who you think could benefit from this deep dive, share the video. For those of you who happen to be looking to pick up some new gear, I greatly appreciate it if you consider using my links in the description as they support the channel. As always, transferring good energy and until next time.